Hello, my name is Susana Costa and I'm very happy to be here today at Arts Eat 2021, even in a virtual mode, to present the paper Tackling Online Hate Speech, written by me, by Professor Brunens da Silva and Professor Miriam Tavares. We all are researchers at the Research Center for Arts and Communication in University of Algarve in the south in southern Portugal. So our objective today is to To, to present some results of the project Play Your Role, which main goal was to understand and find ways to prevent and counteract uh, online hate speech in gaming communities and online gaming, namely through the concept of gamification and by developing four serious games to implement by teachers and educators uh, to a, a young uh, public. So video games represent uh, one of the most influential media in popular culture. Figures f speak for themselves and we have here some numbers. In 2021, there are more than 2.5 billion players in Europe. 70 are aged under 18. Increasing numbers of players gather in virtual communities such as Twitch or Discord where they can assist to live streams, also where they communicate, they form teams, they share game strategies and where they pass a lot of time. So our study, based in previous finds and in some material and methods that we will present uh, after, they find the, the positive motivations for the game. And which are these positive motivations? We name some socialization, fantasy, opportunity to exercise control, fun, meaningful um, opportunities for social interaction, inspiring creativity, meaningful and lasting relationships, discovering a sense of community, relaxation and also challenge. Also, in other hand, video games prove to be excellent educational tools able to focus and motivate children and youth to learn. Researchers advocate participatory, interactive and digital learning frameworks suited to the skills and interests of new generations. The game's ambience is the favorite environment for entertainment, socializing, communicating and learning, reflecting the actual importance and influence of this specific media. Yet, and this is the problem, a decade of research studies on online hate speech shows that games and gaming communities are breeding ground for harmful content. Experiences with hate speech can happen through three routes, exposure, victimization and aggression. Online hate speech has a lot of names. It can also be known as cyber hate, online toxic behavior, griefing or online disinhibition. It is a great concern of the Council of Europe, which defines it as a public incitement or hatred directed to groups or individuals on the basis of certain characteristics, including race, color, religion, descent and national or ethnic origin. We concluded in our study that race is the most reported ground of hate speech, followed by xenophobia, sexual orientation and anti-gypsism. Studies show that the exposure and victimization of this toxic language has an, a negative impact on young players, which are forming their personality, correlated with negative emotions such as depression, anxiety, deviant behavior, and decreasing well-being. So, how can we counteract this problem, these narratives? Our study uh, wants to develop a strategy to prevent hate speech based in three stages. First, we want to perceive how youngsters copy online hate speech on and how they describe it. Secondly, we, we want to look for strategies to prevent this phenomenon in games environment. And finally, we aim to pave the way for an international program to counteract online hate in video games. To perform this study, that was the base of the develop, development of video games, we prepared a questionnaire survey with closed questions in a liquid scale basis where respondents were asked to specify their level of their level of agreement, frequency, importance and likelihood on a symmetric scale for a series of statements related to gaming and hate speech. The questionnaires were applied into the national language of three countries, Portuguese, Lithuanian and Italian, and then they were applied in schools in these three countries. 
It was a questionnaire anonym, was composed with five groups, and the answers to the survey were analyzed with um, descriptive statistics and correlations between the variables and the hypothesis. Afterwards, we implemented interviews with focus groups in the three countries, with open questions, bringing valuable information to the research about the student's personal experience with this phenomenon. The analysis of the quantitative and qualitative data allowed to point out some conclusions that I will show. But first, we have here some uh, material. Uh, the sample of the students was uh, 572 students. The analysis made was statistical. We made the hypothesis and the correlations. And then finally, the interviews. And here are some conclusions of this study. Uh, that was then the base to develop the serious games to counteract hate speech. So, there is a definite link between playing time and increased exposure to hate speech. Another interesting fact in our study shows that uh, the link between exposure to hate speech and the greater tendency to practice, as well as the awareness to identify hate communities more clearly and to be contacted by those groups. This correlation between the exposure and the tendency to practice hate speech confirms the symptoms of the sensitization process. Uh, it was already described by uh, uh, researchers like Suller, and uh, this means that uh, after repeated exposure to hate speech, students trivialized offenses and prejudice, although they were aware of its effects outside the virtual world. Another conclusion points out that young people who experience hate speech feel it is a problem in gaming environments, yes, but also they feel that it affects the life outside the game, attributing responsibility to the players themselves and indicating the existence of moderators as a possible way to reduce the phenomenon. Our findings conduct this to a possible solution. Video games are the problem, yes, but... They can also be the solution by creating counter-narratives as well as encouraging game creators to imagine mechanisms that stimulate the knowledge of how to live online together. Interestingly, data shows that most of the young players inquired consider that video games can be used as a tool to reinforce empathic behaviors, tackling online toxicity and reversing the, pro the, sens the sensitization process. Previous reports already point out that parental mediation and media literacy, as well as human rights education, are possible ways to combat the phenomenon. So, what do we want? Our findings pointed out the need to guarantee educational intervention programs through an educational and concerted strategy, using gamification mechanisms, yes, and through serious games, which are aimed by youngsters, that can contrast the problem of cyber hate in video games. So, furthermore, the results in this study also underscore the need to train young people for a healthier digital life through measures such as limiting online time, self-assessment of online behavior, identification of risky behavior, and the creation of safer digital zones. Then, after the study, we uh, organized an international hackathon. It was uh, intended to be in Italy, but afterwards, because of the coronavirus, coronavirus um, this hackathon was made online. Uh, and uh, we 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 gathered three four teams sorry four teams and these four teams uh, were mentored mentored by the the team of the project and they used the theor theoretical and practical results of the study to develop produce and made um, and make available four serious games. These video games are uh, available in open access in the PlayerRoll project website, playerroll.au, Divide et Impera, YouTube Simulator, Social Threads and Deplatforming Platforming are the names of the games. They all are accompanied by uh, pedagogical itineraries that help teachers and educators to implement these games in school. 
Uh, also, we we produced a pervasive game named All Among Us that uh, um, researches and shows how hate speech can escalate and become a real problem to um, uh, the gamers and uh, the 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 users of online platforms. Our contribution in this field consists in using games imbued with a counter-narrative capable of containing online hate speech by valuing awareness of human rights through a powerful tool, the serious games. Um, so, uh, in our paper, we describe the technical issues of the four serious games and uh, the pervasive game. Now, uh, the next steps are to implement the, the, the games in schools, to disseminate them through schools. Uh, some of them are translated in uh, four or five uh, European languages. And uh, then we want to uh, uh, recollect the, the data of the the users of the games and to analyze the opinions and the interventions of the youngsters who uh, experience these games. I appreciate your attention and I'm, I'm ending my communication here, but if you have further questions and if you want to know more about this project and about these games, I will be able at the end to answer some questions or I'll, I also can respond by email uh, if if you if you want to contact me okay many thanks and uh, hope to see you soon